Good day! Our report is about business process outsourcing. Today, we will focus on two companies that are leading in this industry. These companies are International Business Machines and Accenture. First up, we have International Business Machines, which is also known as IBM. IBM does computer hardware, computer software, IT services, and IT computing. It serves over 60 countries all over the world including Philippines, Afghanistan, United States, India, Germany, Austria, and more. Its main headquarter is located in US. Its current CEO is Jeannie Romeki. She graduated from the Robert R. McCormick School of Engineering and Applied Science at Northwestern University. Last year, they generated a revenue of $104.5 billion and with profit of $16.6 billion. Last year, they their employees reached 434,246. Their main competitors are Apple, Cisco Systems, Dell, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft Corporation, Oracle Corporation, and VMware. Their mission and vision, dedication to every client success, innovation that matters for our company and for the world, trust and personal responsibility in all relationships. They have software products for product finding and then they also have system software. Their popular software product lines are CICS, Cognos, DB2, FileNet, IMS, Informix, Infosphere, Lotus, Platform Computing, Rational, SPSS, SystemZ, Evoli, WebSphere, and then they are they also provide products especially for medium businesses, small businesses, business partners. They also have retail store products for point of sale, self-service, all retail store products. They also have personal computers used from IBM and PC recycling and buyback programs for businesses. They also have printing products like Printing system and supplies from InfoPrint Solutions Company. They also have printing paper and toner from IBM. Other than this, they also have internet threat mitigation, semiconductors, upgrades, accessories, and parts, workstations. Their resources are announcement letters, financing options, systems advice sort tool, warranty information, and for storage, they have disk, network attached storage, storage area networks, storage software, tape, storage H to Z, and certified used storage. One of the strengths of IBM is that they are the first mover in cloud computing solutions for enterprises. IBM has moved to cloud computing since 2007 with its Blue Cloud program, which was designed to offer hardware and software solutions for enterprises that were willing to have their own private cloud. Since then, the company has become the first reference point for enterprise cloud solutions in the cloud market. Unlike many other companies in the cloud market, the company has been offering the broadest range of software and services in one place. Another strength of IBM is their brand reputation. IBM has a significant market reach all over the world in all of the markets it operates. Company has also been awarded as number one company for leaders, number one company, green company worldwide, number two most respected company, number 5 most admired company and has received many more awards. This has resulted in a very positive and strong brand reputation. According to Interban, IBM brand was valued at 
$75.5 billion in 2012 and was the third most valuable brand in the world. Brand reputation significantly influences consumers' decision to buy the product and IBM clearly benefits from that. Next is diversified business. Yes. IBM segments its business into four divisions, such as hardware, software, services, and financing. In 2000, the company was earning 35% of its income from hardware sales, where profit margins are low and future market growth is low or negative. IBM has diversified from hardware to software business, which is expected to generate 50% of company's income by 2015. This shift will result in lower impact of the negative trends in hardware market and higher profitability from sales of software and services. The company has also diversified geographically and now earns more than 60% of its income from outside US. IBM heavily invests into China and the rest of Asia to increase the geographic diversity of its income. Fourth is strong competency in acquisitions. Over the last 13 years, from 2000 to 2012, IBM has acquired more than 140 companies in strategic areas including analytics, cloud, security, and commerce. This has led to substantial growth in software and consulting offerings from IBM and established the company as a leading software and consulting provider for enterprises. IBM also expects to invest $20 billion over the next two years on acquisitions to strengthen its product portfolio even further. Company's competence in successful acquisitions is the key advantage other companies like HP currently lack. Last strength is integration of products and services. IBM offers hardware, software, and services which will enable the company to provide one-stop solution for enterprises and integrate product for the customers. One of IBM's weakness is that they have expensive service and software solutions. IBM offers expensive integrated custom solutions for enterprises that want to build reliable IT infrastructure in their companies. This often involves buying hardware, software, and services from IBM at the same time, which is very costly for any size of enterprise. Such an infrastructure investment is often postponed in times of uncertainty or slowing economic growth. This weakness was evident over the last few years when IBM struggled to cross-sell its products and saw decreasing revenues in the same period. Another weakness is that they focus mainly on customized products. IBM focuses on providing customized solutions for large and medium enterprises. This is a very profitable business model but captures only a small share of the market. The rest of the market is often satisfied with off-the-shelf software products and services. The lack of these products makes IBM less approachable by the rest of the market where competitors like Oracle and Salesforce thrive. For opportunities, they can expand services and software divisions. IBM provides various services like cloud security and infrastructure. The company should focus on growing these divisions as they promise better growth opportunities and higher profit margins. Another opportunity is increasing demand of cloud-based services. The cloud computing market is expected to grow by an average of 22% each year from 2011 to 2020. By 2020, the market is expected to reach $240 billion value. Currently, IBM is offering many services related with cloud computing and is well positioned to benefit from the growing market.
One of the things that threaten IBM is the increasing competition in cloud computing market. Cloud computing market is new and lucrative market that has a lot of growth potential. The possible profits attract many newcomers and startups and threaten to take the market share from the incumbent IBM. Another threat is the slowing growth of world econ economy. As mentioned earlier, IBM sales heavily depend on the enterprise's willingness to make huge investments into IT infrastructures, which is far from the first option during the times of slow economic growth. While this scenario is not forecasted for the whole world during 2014 and 2013, some regions like Europe will still struggle to grow. IBM is the first to cloud computing solutions. And with an increase in demand for cloud services, most likely, it is possible for the company to increase their gross margin given that they will maintain in providing good services and will meet the customer's expectations. Edge 201 Since the brand reputation is already good, expanding their services would be very ideal because people have already trusted their brand. Moreover, that can lead to an increase in profitability. With an increase in demand for cloud services, IBM must take advantage of their brand reputation. The brand reputation is very important and essential in influencing customers' decision in purchasing products and services. IBM must target and try to capture other areas of the world where they have the potential of capturing a very large market share. It is ideal that IBM expand their services in emerging industrial economies of Asia, like China and Korea. IBM should take advantage of their business diversity in meeting the large demand of cloud services. If IBM will have a new product or service, they must target first their partner companies in offering new services. IBM must know what their partner companies need and try to offer them a one package of service. That will be two-way beneficial for both companies. Being able to provide integrated products and services to their partner companies will make IBM stronger in competence. With regards to expanding services, IBM may try to provide little services with not so high service charge, which would benefit business and also attract the small enterprises. Those little things may help increase their sales. IBM targets the market of medium and large enterprises. However, they must invest in research and development if they want to enhance and create more services and products, which could benefit also small enterprises if they want to enter that kind of market. If there will be a high demand of cloud service from a lot of small enterprises, then IBM needs to develop a cheaper software and service that will accommodate and meet the needs of small business. Since they are the first mover in cloud computing solutions, they now have the advantage over other BPOs. IBM must sustain their strategies and create more innovations to ensure that competitors won't surpass them. IBM has already a great advantage over other competitors, especially the new BPOs, since they had established a good brand reputation. IBM just needs to maintain the good reputation. IBM should ensure that they get to enter a country which has not yet fully invaded by their big competitors and try to acquire already the companies that need IT or cloud services and systems. IBM must ensure that they can meet the needs of their partner companies in order not to lose them. If there will be a slow growth in economy, consumers and enterprises would not be wanting to waste their income or investment. So they will resort into choosing the known and safe brand, which could provide a quality service. Since IBM has a good reputation, there is a big possibility that a lot of companies will choose them if they can come up with affordable service packages.
Despite of slowing growth in economy, there is still a high demand for technological products and services from large and medium enterprises. This kind of industry is not dying and greatly in demand, so IBM may not be totally affected. IBM must be updated regarding the price range offered by their competitors because if a competitor can offer a cheap service with the same quality, then IBM will definitely have a problem. IBM needs to come up with services and products which could be a bit cheaper because they might lose customers if they will continue to raise prices despite of the neglecting economic growth. The research innovation strategy structure has three phases. First phase is the grand challenges wherein IBM experienced high risk. They experienced that during the 80s to 90s. At that time, they focused on research studies. They were IT-centric. When the new millennium entered, they started having big bets and they were are becoming more known in the industry. IBM started focusing on their clients. They worked on marketing differentiation until 2007. In 2008 and 2009, they started focusing on how they can expand their business through re driving research strategies. At that phase, their investment was over 100 million per term. It is the phase of big bets. The last phase is the global technology outlook, which is where IBM is today. IBM is looking for high impact disruptive technologies which will lead to game changing products and services for the coming 10 years. In 2009, IBM delivered customer value through the cloud in the areas of security, energy efficiency, and services enablement. They also created the cloud ecosystem through collaboration services, platform scaling technologies, and exploration of cloud-aware middleware. In 2010, they created the Competitive Compute Cloud, offering and significant value through specialist clouds such as Storage Cloud, Test Cloud, Desktop Cloud, and Industry Solution-specific clouds. In 2011, they substantially contributed to the IBM Cloud product and service offerings. They had drive end-to-end -end differentiation through private, hybrid, and industry-specific clouds. They had leverage structure over image lifecycle management, fine-grained security, and quality of service optimized platform as a service. They opti optimally managed virtualized environments on the clouds. They had leverage high-scale, low-touch cloud operating environment and single view of the hybrid cloud. They also included innovative research contributions in the common cloud management platform. Our next example for a business process outsourcing company is Accenture. Accenture is a public limited company with the mission of helping their clients create their future. Their vision is to become one of the world's leading companies bringing innovations to improve the way the world works and lives. Their chairman and CEO is Pierre Nanterme. Their COO is Joe De Blaire, and their CFO is David Rowland. They have approximately 275,000 employees all over the world and 5,400 of those employees are leaders. Accenture operates in more than 200 cities in 56 countries all over the world. These countries are found in America, Asia Pacific, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Accenture is an expert in communications, media, and technology, financial services, health and public service, products, and resources.
Their products include air, freight, and travel services, automotive, consumer goods and services, industrial equipment, infrastructure and transportation services, life sciences, and retail. The first strength of Accenture is that they have global reach and scale. Accenture can deliver innovative, high-quality services at lower costs by leveraging the Accenture Global Delivery Network. They have employees almost everywhere in the globe which makes it easier for them to scale quickly to provide talents and skills and resources to be able to deliver the desired project of their clients. According to International Association of Outsourcing Professionals, Accenture is the number one outsourcing company for the three consecutive years. The second strength of Accenture is their great number of employees. They have approximately 275,000 employees. These employees are considered as 19% of equities under information technology system industry. Another strength is that Accenture is one of the firms in the consultancy sector and outsourcing sector that has the largest revenues. Its consulting revenue makes up more than 50% of the total revenues of Accenture. In September 2013, it turned out that the revenues from consultancy was larger than expected. From consulting, they got 15,383,485 dollars. And from outsourcing, they got 13,179,000 $325. Its total is $28,562,810. Last strength of Accenture is that they are the industry pioneer. They had contracts with petroleum companies and high technology and retailing companies from the past 20 years in the industry. Just like any other company, Accenture have weaknesses too. One of their weaknesses are they are focused more on big companies. Its heavy partner-driven approach to sales does not scale easily to the mid-market. This has been a big-time weakness in many of the biggies in consulting and services industry. Accenture has always been targeting big projects and big clients. The Diamond clients include DuPont, DHP Billiton, Vodafone, Barclays, and Bofa. Their second weakness is that they rely mainly with consulting. Since their revenues from consultancy makes up more than 50% of their total revenues, maybe it is about time for them to improve more on their other sectors. For opportunities, they are one of the leading IT companies. They rank 53 as a global brand which makes them reputable. Second opportunity is the growing demand for technology. Every year, there is something in technology that is being discovered and put up in the market. And third opportunity is the recession. Because of recession, Businesses will need to cut down their expenses in operations and Accenture can address the needs of these businesses at a lower cost. Threat for Accenture is inevitable. There are growing and emerging business processing companies. Intense competition is the biggest threat, especially from ID. Other competitors in most of its business arenas are Computer Sciences Corporation, Data Consultancy Services, Ypro, and Infosys. S101
their consulting and outsourcing services can be improvised to better adapt to the economies of the different countries they serve. S102 They should continue pursuing healthcare IT spending because it is another opportunity for them to improve the services they offer to many countries. S103 Accenture's services can better appeal to different countries if it continues to cost slightly lower than what their competitors offer. S1 P1 even if they have other competitors such as IBM, Computer Sciences, Corporation, Deloitte, Tata Consultancy Services, Wipro, and Infosys, Accenture can partner with large companies all over the world. S201 Accenture can continue to expand its business and widen their reach. S202 they can invest more on research and development to further innovate their services. S203 Having a great workforce can be an advantage if they can be utilized to reduce costs in the products. S2T1 Maximize the allocation of workload to employees. There can be other departments to improve stability of services. S301, maximize the usage of IT in the business to support the consultancy and outsourcing services of the company. S302, develop new strategies based on assessing performances of other top IT companies can increase the market share growth of the company. This can give Accenture a competitive advantage in further increasing its profit margin and market share. S303 Accenture can try to implement cost cutting services that are appropriate for the businesses in times of recession. S3 T1 They can somewhat increase the advertisements for better brand recognition and branding. S401 to better break into reaching mid-market businesses, Accenture can offer consulting and outsourcing services that will resonate better with small to medium enterprises. Various mid-market clients can help in company branding and business stability. Since Accenture has been mainly serving large businesses, their services might not be compatible with businesses of smaller size. S402. Since the company is well developed in the information technology area, they are known to provide high quality service to their clients. Accenture must always find new ways to innovate their consulting and outsourcing services. S403. The company can incorporate more customized solutions to serve businesses in different industries without increasing too much on the cost. S4 T1. Accenture must carefully maintain their rank and brand name's reputation to avoid being overcome by their competitors. W101. The company should also consider offering efficient dealing in their services with small to medium enterprises. Although Accenture has had trouble reaching small to medium enterprises because of stiff competition, the company can implement a more effective approach. W102 Accenture should offer their IT services to small to medium businesses as well. This will be good for the company because they will discover new ways to resonate their services to mid-market businesses. W103 To increase their profit margin, Accenture can focus on small to medium companies because they are already well known by large companies that are industry leaders. W1 T1 Accenture can study how their competitors successfully reach into the mid market sector and use it to create a more modified and suitable strategy for the company. W201 Since they are not only a consulting company, 
they can venture more into outsourcing and providing information technology to increase business stability in terms of performance and profit. W2O2, for Accenture not to rely mainly on consulting and outsourcing, it can continue venturing more into developing other kinds of information systems for better assistance of the businesses it serves. This way, Accenture can increase the demand it gets by improving the diversity of services. W2O3, Accenture can develop modified solutions for businesses that will consult regarding their performance in times of recession. The need for new business strategies will increase, thus Accenture services may be more in demand in these times. W2T1, they should make sure that they are still giving competitive solutions to their clients. For Accenture, when they say innovation, they mean product innovations and new markets. Clear innovations provide the organization with long-term plans for the top and bottom line progress which results to a comparative advantage that can be sustained. To make the desired innovation applicable and have positive results, Accenture considers five elements which will be discussed in this section of the report. The first element is strategy and objectives. The long-term target must be identified. Do they want to create knowledge, strengthen core business, or establish new technology standards? The level of it being radical and incremental is also determined. The area where the innovation should also be determined. Will this be new products and services, business processes, or business model innovation? The role of external partners is also identified. Validated strategies are important for R&D because sometimes traditional measurements are not valid at times when the expenses of R&D are high and the return on investment does not scale in proportion. The second element is the metrics and measures. The measures and metrics serve as parameters of Accenture whether or not to consider a proposed innovation. It is very important in risk management. Key performance indicators measure the, the development in meeting the strategies and development. The management manages risk by aligning the metrics with the strategy. They also provide guidance and motivation to their people. Accenture takes ideas from their employees. They also facilitate innovation management. They do this by measuring the return on investments as a whole and per project and or average development time for new product or processes. The third element is identifying, evaluating, and exploiting opportunities. They do it by setting a clear stage to stage. From this, the organization is able to manage the interfaces between each phase. Identifying opportunities is the process of gathering ideas. These ideas serve as the foundation for the following phases. The next phase is evaluating opportunities. In this phase, the opportunity is being assessed. In this phase, they consider the economic feasibility of the product and project. Business case methodology is used in this phase wherein the projects are being ranked. The deprioritized ones are set aside. The last phase is exploiting opportunities. In this phase, the products are introduced in the market and the projects are implemented. It starts by producing prototypes in some markets. The fourth element is innovation rules and responsibilities. Accenture has innovation board that go beyond the usual scope of R&D. The organization should also be assessed in the sense that the company must decide 
whether the company will be more productive if the decision-making processes are centralized or decentralized. The process by which how the innovation can move across the corporation's boundaries to be able to include partners and customers.